Well, the campaign against me is about depriving me of salary and livelihood. It's about targeting my ability to perform live. This is about establishing a precedent. This will be used to apply to other pro-Palestinian music. You can never talk my fire in a booth. I don't need a label, I'm saying to the truth. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Well, to start with, the organization which is calling for the removal of my music from Spotify goes by the name of We Believe in Israel. But what is We Believe in Israel? It's a project of the Britain Israel Communications and Research Center, or BICOM. This is the largest Israel lobby group in this country. Everybody bounce, bounce, bounce. But the key thing for people to know is this, this is about establishing a precedent. This will be used to apply to other pro-Palestinian music. So this is a way for a hostile foreign power to censor what type of music people in Britain and in the United States, as far as we know at the moment, the English speaking um, countries, what they can and can't say about Palestine. So we have an open letter to Spotify, which has been signed by over 35,000 people, including them is a princess of Jordan, is a former UN special rapporteur, is the grandson of Nelson Mandela, a member of parliament in South Africa, is Noam Chomsky, is Ilan Pape, is many public figures who are well known in their reputations for fairness and anti-racism, from Roger Waters of Pink Floyd to UB40 to Mark Ruffalo and uh, Miriam Margulies. Many people have come forward to sign this open letter and say very, very clearly that we are not afraid and we will speak out about what the Israel lobby is doing. It does not have the right to censor pro-Palestinian music. Well, the initial statement said that my mere presence on Spotify was particularly offensive. The implication from that is that my presence was targeted. But the precedent of removing even one lyric from one of my songs will be used to push further, no doubt. He is not an expert in the Arabic language, so is in no position to pontificate about what Intifada does or doesn't mean and he has no right to censor me. Well, if you establish the lines of communication between an Israel lobby group and Spotify, which says we are experts to be consulted on what is and what isn't an incitement to violence, you know, it's quite a very serious, it's a very serious um, criminal charge. I'm not a lawyer. But my understanding is that if you try and charge someone with incitement of violence, you have to prove the way in which it has incited violence, of which there is none. No, there hasn't thus far been an example where an Israel lobby group has been able to lobby a private company like Spotify to remove a piece of work that it opposes to. So other artists, of course, have um, an awareness of the Israel lobby and are opposed to it and are ready to speak out. Um, in terms of this case, as I say, this is about using it to establish a precedent which can be wielded in other cases. This is an extension of the muzzling of Palestinians and them stifling their ability to express themselves about what is actually happening to them. Mm -hmm.